Hi, welcome to my channel and welcome uh, back if you've been before. This time, the last time I did some colour swatching of pencils and I will link that at the end. This time I'm going to show you how I tried creating some dupes for some of these Daniel Smith paints that I was really wanting to buy but thought I probably shouldn't because I could probably mix a fairly good substitute with the paints I've got. First of all, I'm going to just swatch this. This is the Garnet Genuine. I'll just swatch the dark tone. Um, Kyanite, def definitely. I'd love to have that. Although I, it was very expensive. I don't think I'd be... Look at that. That's gorgeous. Um, I don't think I'd be buying that anyway. Jackson's only had the, um, the big tubes of it. So not something I can justify. Not until I'm selling my pieces and getting some money back for them. My Mayan Blue, Mayan Mayan. Um, this one's only light fastness of two, which kind of put me off a bit anyway, but I'm sure it's pretty good still. Uh, the Red Fuchsia Shites, I won't do too many, so I'll just do that one. Oh my goodness. Okay, maybe worth the money. I don't know if I'll be able to recreate anything quite as quite as lush as these. Use that word lush again. Very common in Wales, this word, lush. But anything quite as um it's just they're just creamy and pigment loaded and thick. That's the hard bit to recreate, really, isn't it? Right, there you go. What should we do here? Let's do the, I know I had a go at this one. You can see why, why I was wanting, desiring these. Look at that. That's the Quinacridone Fuchsia. And here we are, the Quinacridone Violets. Now I've got a Schmincke Perylene Violet and I can use that to try and recreate that. But now I'm actually swatching these again and rem remembering how luscious they are. I'm doubting that I'm going to be able to creates anything quite that creamy textured but anyway we'll see if we can get something similar to that oh i've got the cascade green now and it uh, this is um imperial purple but i don't have any kind of i've got an arm i've got the amethyst and i've got an ultramarine violet but i don't have like a diox what's it called dioxide or dioxine purple or this kind of imperial purple, the bluer purple. Dioxazine, that's the one. And I then I think the rosy red gold, and that'll do it then, won't it? Nicely. It's just pure pleasure, isn't it? I think I'm sure lots of you are the same. I find myself doing far much far too much playing with colour and swatching. And not enough, well, you just prevaricate. Not enough actual artwork. But then I said to myself, well, maybe what I should be doing then, if I love colours so much, is doing something a bit more with colour rather than, well, as well as doing more of the artwork. Right, so let's start off with a Garnet Genuine. Um, I have a an Indian red here, so... I think that's where I need to start with this one. And I'm just seeing a little bit more kind of 
orangey yellow undertone in that. So I think the Nicolazzo yellow will be a little bit too much. Either the Quin Gold or I think the Transparent Red Oxide. Let's give that a little go. Let's see if that's close. That might be a little bit too... Oof. Gone too far there. Let's try and pull that back a bit. What do you reckon? Potter's Pink, just to soften that down. That's closer, isn't it? I'll work on that one. Okay, next job. The Kyanite. I have Luna Blue, which is a similar. Now, we need to go a bit greyer on that one. So, I'm going to give a little bit of, not that much. This is um, Mars Black. So, uh, PBK 11, isn't it? Mars Black. And there's something slightly dove grey about it. That's not too bad. It's a little bit green, so I'm tempted to put in a tiny bit of something that will pinken it up a bit. A little tiny bit of ultramarine. It's not too bad, is it? These aren't helping with the light today. But that's not too bad. It would go, I could go a touch. Ooh, should I just put a tiny bit of ultramarine violet in? Gone too far, look. Gone a bit too violet-y violet there. Knew I should have left it there. There we are. There we are. Let's try that. Close enough, anyway. That's not bad. Right, okay. So I can produce something a bit like kyanite. Now, Mayan Blue Genuine. I've got um, a cobalt turquoise here, which is a kind of a similar shade of blue. And it's going to need something, tiny bit of something to make it, again, I'm going to need a little bit of the, whoops, the PBK 11 because it needs a little bit of I don't know how that's gone purple considering it's only got oh I put it in the wrong one that's why dope okay hold on try that again shall we there we go all right gone too far a little back with a bit more of this now, and we need something else in there. Let's just see what we've got so far. Yeah, a little bit too green. So either a bit of the Luna Blue or I could bring back, bring it back with a bit of Phthalo Blue Green shade, maybe just a touch, because we know how strong that is. I wonder if Indanthrone, in, Indanthrine Blue would pull that back a bit from the green hmm well it's a bit heavier but it's a nice colour isn't it just needs watering down a little yeah not too bad so I'm happy enough with that Get the mask tone on that side, like that one has. Not so bad, not too far apart. Right, red fuchsia. To me, that's quite potter's pinky. Notice uh, my free ceramic uh, palettes uh, because I decided I wasn't going to buy a ceramic palette, and I remembered I had these. A couple of these glass microwave plates, which are absolutely fabulous for the job. I know 
I could always paint the bottom white, I'm thinking. I don't, I'm not too distracted by the brown underneath though. It's quite neutral. So yeah, that's working really well. And it's free. Right, um, right, Potter's Pink. It's a slightly less blue. Similar, but more orangey. This is where I go too far again with my transparent red oxide or something. Maybe touch of the Quin Gold or the Quin... Right, I'm going to go for the transparent red oxide again. I'm going to put a little tiny bit of that in. Because, you know, our Potter's Pink's not got that much power is it you can see these are a bit haven't dried completely right let's try that not bad not bad at all slightly too orangey maybe this time now tiny bit more pot pink and I don't know I could add some mica or something to uh, make it glittery But I think that will be quite, quite sufficient. So I don't need to buy that. Darn it. Right. And should think, the only thing I could say with this is that it's much um, more heavily pigmented. Potter's pink is a little bit less, isn't it? But then this granulates and that's not granulating. But there we are. That's fine. Good enough. Now, the Serpentine Green, I've got Green Appetite Genuine, I've got Lemon Yellow, that seems to me to be about the right kind of combo for, the, for that one. Oh, look at that, oh my goodness, oh, oh, oh fabulous. Right, and Lemon, Lemon Yellow then. How much of this do we need? How much of this? Because that's probably not as strong, is it? Right, I'm going to go a little bit. Need to go a bit more yellow. Oh, it's not bad, is it? See, that's one I really don't need to buy. I can do that. That's fine. Maybe try just a touch more of the yellow. But yeah, that's sorted, isn't it? Really don't need to buy that. Okay. Happy? Very happy. That was easy. Right, uh, Quinacridone Fuchsia. Now I've got, what have I got? Windsor Red. It's a little bit purplier. So I've got Quinacridone Magenta, which is another Windsor and Newton colour. So I'm reckoning those two pretty much. Oh, look at that, Windsor Reds. I only discovered this recently. Oh, Windsor Red Deep, actually. I've only discovered this recently. Uh, it's a lovely colour. Do you know, sometimes I think I certainly get a little bit seduced by the names of the colours. I don't know. They they have a bit of an emotional pull, don't they? Whereas Windsor Red doesn't really do that for me. But at the end of the day, it's a fab colour. And um, we've got to remember that actually it ain't always the name. Sometimes it's just the colour. Let's see what we've got here. Not bad. That's pretty close as well, isn't it? I'm wondering where to put just a tiny, tiny, tiny tad of this. This is Schmincke. I don't put too much of that in it. Schmincke Perlene Violet. Just to give it that depth. That might do it. I might have gone too far. We'll see now. No, that's pretty good, isn't it? Right, okay. That's Quinacridone Fuchsia sorted. Quinacridone Violet, so, oh, the good thing about this is I can turn it, it's like a, it's like one of those food turny things. Okay, what do you call those? I'm sure someone will tell me. I'm really bad with words sometimes. They're hidden in the back of my brain somewhere and I really struggle to dig them out. Right, so, um, I think the Perlene, I think some Quinacridone Violet, 
uh, quinacridone magenta, sorry, with the perylene. Yeah, that's not bad either. That's pretty good. I think I'll stop there with that one. I think I'm on a roll now. So, so sorry. I had both the quinacridone lilac and the imperial purple off the chart. So I just have a chat about them. I, I used quinacridone magenta and I just added a little bit of the pyrrolene violet just to darken it and that came quite quickly. Then the imperial purple was just the quinacridone magenta with ultramarine or French ultramarine actually. I went a bit too blue to start with. Played around. I got something pretty close in the end because they're both nice fresh um, clean colours. They made a lovely clean violet. All right. And then I think we okay again on the Aussie red gold. I realised by then that we were off screen. Right. Well, we could definitely do some quinacridone gold or some nickelaz or yellow. And we could definitely go transparent red oxide there, couldn't we? All those kind of really luminescent oranges and yellows. Should we give those three a go? Where should I start? I think I'll start with the... I think I'll start in the middle with the Kanakadon gold. I'm not sure if you can see these now. Right, I'm if I can do that, can't I? Because I'll be using mostly that end. Right, okay. Um, Kanakadon gold, I need to go... Oh, I can add a bit of red to this in a minute, I think. Yeah, that might not be right. Anyway, it's gone a bit browner. Let me try a bit of quinacridone red. That's where the orange is going to come in. How am I doing? Not bad. A little bit of Nicolas or yellow now then, I think, just to, you know, that was, this is the surprising one, isn't it? Sits there looking so murky and a bit like a sort of a raw umbery colour. And then, woof, luminescent yellow in it. No, that's not bad, is it? There we are. Anyway, I can, again, another one I know I can play around with. And get some variations on that. So, yeah. Don't need to go spend my money then, do I? Right, I just wanted to append that I tried the light red instead of the Indian red for the garnet genuine and I mixed it with potter's pink and it came a lot closer so um, that's pretty good um, what else have I done yeah it's a bit more of the PBK 11 to both of those which definitely improved them and I tried the Aussie red gold again because I wasn't didn't feel as though I was getting it quite as luminescent as the original one so I just stuck to Nicolazzo yellow and the quinacridone red and I think a little touch of the quinacridone gold this time. So I didn't put any of the transparent red oxide in and it stayed a little bit um, more glowy with the yellow. So that's, that's good. There we are. Here's a quick overview of the colours I used. W and N stands for Winsor & Newton. SCH stands for Schmincke. And DS stands for Daniel Smith. Now, for me at the moment, because I tend to be painting mostly landscapes, I'm not too worried about the fact that the perylene violet is slightly more muted than the original quinacridones. But I think that if you or if I in future am going to start painting flowers more, I think I would invest in the quinacridones because they've definitely got a greater chroma, they're brighter, uh, they're cleaner colours and they're very beautiful. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that. I will um, be doing some future videos. So if you'd like to like and subscribe, then I'll be colour swatching all my pencils at some point and the watercolours you saw in my palette. I also intend to do some sets of colour mixes. For example, I've recently done a set of colour mixes that would be beautiful for moorland landscapes. So that might be of interest to you as well. Take care now. Bye-bye.